Welcome to Phone Regilling Engineering. Most times, people assume that our planet Earth is solid, hard, and cold. But that's not true at all. Our planet Earth is a huge green planet. In its center, it is as hot as the surface of the sun. And only on the very outermost part is there a solidified layer. This is the Earth crust where we live on. In this thin Earth crust, we can also find all the raw materials we need for our living. Most of these raw materials are gathered by miners. Most of us we know somebody who has worked in a mine or who works in a mine. We also know what a mine looks like. In such mines we are digging for ore or coal or other raw materials. Well, all these are solid raw materials. But there are also many fluid treasures in the crust of the earth that we need for our living. For example, this includes water, crude oil, natural gas, even in the broader sense, geothermal heat. All these raw materials have something in common. They are able to flow in the underground. Therefore, we call our efforts in mining these fluid treasures in the earth, fluid mining. This is what we deal with in our institute here. Many people think that fluid raw materials are found in large caves and you just need to drill a borehole down and run a hose down and start pumping it out to the surface. But that's not actually true. We find these raw, fluid raw materials in the tiny microscopic pores of the rock. On the Earth's surface, we have mostly soil. Everyone knows from watering flowers how much water you can pour in a flower pot until the first drop flows out on the bottom side. Why? Because the water stays in the pores of the soil. The same applies for sedimentary rocks. From outside, they look compact. But on closer observation, they are very porous. We cannot see the pores with our naked eye, they, but they look like the pores in this aluminum block. You can clearly see the pores here. We have made a little experiment here in our lab. You can now clearly see that a large volume of water can disappear in a piece of sandstone because about one third of the rock volume consists of pores. This fluid raw material sits in such pores of the rock. In the first 200 meters below the Earth's surface, the pores of the rock usually contain our drinking water. This is our most important food. And here behind me, you can also see our castle downtown Freiburg, how it looks from an altitude of 200 meters. As mentioned earlier, this 200 meters is about the maximum depth where we find our drinking water. As we go deeper down in the earth, the water gets increasingly salty and mineralized. Therefore, it becomes less suitable for drinking. But it is getting warmer. In about 2 kilometers deep, the water is already so hot that you could make coffee or tea with it. But we assume it will be tasty. However, we can use the hot water for heating. For example, for heating buildings or swimming pools. If we, if we can use the hot water directly for heating purposes without the heat pump, then we are talking about deep geothermal energy. Deep geothermal energy heat starts at depths of two or more kilometers. If we even go further down into the earth, let's say at three kilometers depth, the water in the pores of the rock is already so hot that it boils if we bring it up to the surface. This means that we can get steam out of the ground and use it to generate electricity, an important application of deep geothermal energy. In a depth of 3 kilometers, the temperature is about 100 degrees Celsius. That's why I have to put on these gloves to show you this crude oil sample. Crude oil is often found at this depth. If we go even deeper, let's say at the depth of 5 kilometers, the temperature is already 150 degrees Celsius. Here we can find typical natural gas deposits. Everybody knows how important natural gas is in our lives today. No miner ever gets that deep. The deepest mines are not even half as deep. The only possibility of getting access to these fluid raw materials is by drilling deep boreholes. And because these boreholes are so extremely deep, we need very special drilling machines, deep onshore and offshore drilling rigs to get there. Of course, the people who work there cannot see what happens several kilometers deep down below their feet. Hence, the lower part of the drill string is equipped with a variety of intelligent sensors which send measurements from the bottom of the borehole 
to the driller at the surface so that he always knows where he's drilling, what he's actually drilling. He also knows how much pore space is present in the rock and what is the content in these pores, whether it is oil or gas or hot water. How this complex drilling equipment and drilling rigs work. You can study here in our course, Petroleum Engineering. Of course, geothermal energy will also be covered. We look forward to seeing you here in our lectures. Look off.